What? Still in Chicago? Me, me. This is the part two of our episode on Adam Neumann and, and we work. I'm Robert Evans, host of Behind the Bastards podcast. Bad people. Talk about them. Introduced poorly. My guests <laughs> in part two, as with part one, are Dan hey. and Jordan. That's me. I pointed at the wrong ones of you. Don't worry about it. But I know which ones you are. Should I do the bit? Robert? What? Robert? Never what? Mind. I don't understand the bit. Never mind. It's the begin- It's the opening bit. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. Jordan. Oh right. Yeah, where you yeah, ask? Yeah, a, where yeah. you ask a question? You can ask. Ooh, you have, that would be go, interesting. Go, go, well, well, I have a question now. in their podcast. I, I have planned several questions. In, in the podcast, we've done four hundred episodes. <laughs> hey Robert, do you like music? <laughs> yeah. In the podcast that these two do, where they talk a little bit about Alex Jones, uh, uh, Jordan, who normally is the person who comes in uh, cold, uh, yes. asks Dan a question at the start. And I, I guess, yeah, it, it, it hit, me, hit me up with the question. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Now I'm on the spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Robert, mm-hmm. uh, have you uh, any experience with roller coasters? What's your style on roller coasters? I um. I've only ever loved one roller coaster, Jordan, and it wasn't a roller coaster. Right. Um, Robert is married to this. It was a. Coaster. It was a. It was a virtual reality sort of experience, and Six Flags over Texas. Okay. Uh, is this like outside a Star of Dallas Wars type of thing? A little bit. A little bit. Okay. You were like a, a, a like an F sixteen pilot breaking the sound barrier. Love it. Uh, it was very cool. Uh, not really a roller coaster. I don't really like roller coasters. I've been on a number of them. It's fine. It's just not my thing. Okay. Um, but but I liked that ride, and then Six Flags took it away. <sighs> and from you specifically. One day. <laughs> the fuck out. One day I will take vengeance on okay. that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And that is, that is, I want to clarify, that is absolutely a terroristic threat. <laughs> one day they're going to wake up, and it's only going to be five flags. Mm-hmm. God damn it. Yeah, I'm gonna take at least. I'm gonna take at least 18 percent of those flags. <laughs> I or so. uh, I don't know how to do that percentage. It's hard. Something along those lines. Rough for me. Within yeah. the ballpark. And my answer is, I liked that one Mr. Toad's Wild Ride thing. Oh, right. That Wind in the Willows. <laughs> That is that, fun. that book about that a frog that gets drunk and goes to hell. Ooh, and the Brer Rabbit one run. Ooh, I love that ooh, one both ooh, before ooh, ooh. and then in a different way after I realized how racist there it was. It was from Song of the South. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, it was a real. The, before it was just like this is a fun ride. I'm seven. That's just and after Mountain, it was though, like right? really, really. Still, it is 2004. <laughs> that's that's Splash Mountain, right? Isn't it that that's the one that has the Bray Rabbit and because uh, I think so. at the yeah. end of it you go over yeah. the waterfall and they killed that guy yeah I think yeah. so and and that, that, there's so much to unpack about uh, Splash Mountain I mean it has that Song of the South uh, connection to it there's also like a tradition of people flashing on the way down yep. like for kids there's a lot there's a lot going on with a Splash lot going Mountain. on very yeah. complicated mm-hmm. Disney parks in general my favorite was uh, yeah. the Velveteen Rabbit and you you go up and you just stay down. After. My, my favorite is the Velveteen Red Dream, a wrestler for NXT. I, they should have a Velveteen Rabbit ride where they just take something the children love individually and Ooh. destroy it in front of them. <laughs> Less of a ride and more of child abuse, yeah. uh, but I'll, I'll make a part. That's the only way you become real. Yeah. That's the only way you become real. If it were Adam, it would be a bottle of tequila. <laughs> yes. Just Thank you for bringing it back to Adam Neumann. That's a great transition. I'm very smooth. <laughs> so we ended the last episode with, with We Work nearing its height 2016 2017 with a lot of money just gets this in flush uh, 4.4 billion dollars of fucking cash uh which they used to make adam's dumbest dreams come true does he double back to the baby clothes <laughs> in a way oh. <laughs> now well it was after it was right after trump got elected yeah. so he just changed it to the kkk crawlers uh, yeah <laughs> It did have a K. Now, before we get into all that, what he did with all this VC money, I want to start this episode by talking a little bit about cults some more. Now, WeWork has been described by a number of former employees as cult-like, and Neumann has been described as a cult leader. Former employees often call his personal charisma almost intoxicating. One former executive said, if you had to go to war, you wanted him to be your general. Another recalled, his sense of himself is beyond human. When you're in a room with Adam, he can almost convince you of anything. There are certainly cult-like tactics at use in WeWork. Cults endeavor to separate their members from the wider world and the friends and family they have outside the cult. And you could argue that things like Thank God It's Monday and mandatory after-hours fun events fulfill that role. They also rely on consciousness alterating drugs. This is all stuff we've talked about, keeping people tired, exhausted, fucked up, 
and of course, the fact that I, uh, I, I will note in a point of fairness that the fact that Adam himself was often one of the drunkest people in the company makes this a little bit less manipulative. It it's be, sort of like he kind of just digs that stuff. Yeah, it would be a, a much clearer red flag if he was not drinking and handing right. out alcohol. That would be beyond a red flag. Yeah, that yeah, would that, be, that would be that would be deliberately yeah, drugging yeah. his he employees. Fell ass yeah. backwards into being a cult leader. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's more complicated than just he's a cult leader, but he uses a lot of those tactics yeah. um, clearly. Maybe just sort of you get the feeling with him that it's le- a lot of it's not as much intentional as it is like instinctive. Yeah. Um, which I guess is how we get our first cult. Yeah. Some people just know how to do that. Yeah, no, my family uh, was in a cult whenever I was born. Mm-hmm. So uh, I know all of the tricks and uh, all of the ways that you get kind of accidentally swept up in all of that shit. And then next thing you know, everybody's wearing the same clothes. Mm-hmm. Like it happens. Dancing around a fire to journey. Yeah. yeah. Tragic. That's the just the drain. Everybody circles. Although people should consider joining the cult that I'm gonna start. Is that right? What do you got? Oh yeah. What do you got? Give me the the elevator pitch. uh, Were people to talk in elevators? I mean, we're. It's it's a mix of uh, people gifting me with large amounts of machetes. Great. uh, Getting really high Mm -hmm. and shoving Adam Neumann off of buildings. (laughs) It's it's gonna be a good cult. I feel. Mm-hmm. You can do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I, I was just, I was just contemplating that something. there's a there's a shelf life to this thing as there's one Adam Neumann. <laughs> there is, there is. We'll one find of the other tenants people. of this cult. There's the, a, the great thing about shoving people off of buildings is there's always more people in more buildings. That's true. Or effigies. you can just keep shoving. Which is our motto. Just keep shoving. Just keep shoving. Is there going to be a Brigham Young to this uh, Adam Neumann WeWork situation? <sighs> Maybe. We haven't. Uh, we haven't gotten like, it. actual time hasn't really hit gotcha, that point gotcha. yet, so I can't say. All right. Now, if we're going to compare Neumann to a cult leader and we worked to a cult, Keith Raniere's Nexium cult might be the best one to reference. Listeners to part three of our series on Keith Raniere and Nexium will recall that he hosted a yearly event called Vanguard Week, where followers from all over the globe would fly in to celebrate Keith's birthday. In the same vein, we work had Summer Camp, an annual event where employees would gather, celebrate, and network. Here's the New York Times talking about this fun set of days. All kinds of activities were offered. Yoga, axe throwing, leaf printing, a drum circle, along with entertainment by an expensive array of visiting performers. The Chainsmokers once played and received WeWork stock as part of their fee, while The Weeknd was flown in from Toronto by helicopter. Tenacious We, an employee band, has also performed. Sounds insufferable. That's terrible. I don't even want to see the real version. (laughs) It was just so much everything, one former executive said. Alcohol, drugs, there was not a lot of food. That was the only (laughs) thing there wasn't a lot of. (laughs) <laughs> Anything that would bulwark you against against the, the alcohol and the drugs. Oh, yeah, God. I'm super high already, but I'm very hungry. I'm gonna eat all of these mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just for sustenance. That has happened to me once, and I. It's not a great food. No, nor is it a great idea. I, as you were describing that festival, I did point at you very aggressively because they kind of al- almost swung you with the axe throwing, didn't they? <laughs> Look, my my cult would indeed center around lots of drugs, throwing axes, sure. dancing around fires. The weekend. <laughs> well, <laughs> that song sounds... often, actually, I do, I do quite like. Um, your count, but your cult sounds suspiciously like the great outdoor games. So no 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 there's no there's no game there's no I feel like I feel like adding an element of competition to throwing sharp objects at inert things mm-hmm. cheapens it that's fair that's you just fair. you're just throwing axes and knives for the joy of throwing sharp things at wooden things you don't want to ruin that's all it's about. the the right. purity of the, the purity turf, of the event yeah. exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly that's exactly. Fair. Now, uh, summer camp included educational interludes, like speeches from quantum physicist Michael Brooks, alongside beer pong and dancing to electronic music. And in the midst of these days-long bacchanals, two employees plied with drugs, limitless alcohol, little food, and less sleep, Adam Neumann would preach his gospel. In a 2013 summer camp, he took to the stage to say, I think the thing that all of us know is that if you want to succeed in this world, you have to build something that has intention. Every one of us is here because it has meaning, because we want to do something that actually makes the world a better place, and we want to make money doing it. The crowd, reportedly, broke into wild cheers at this. One former senior executive who was there later recalled, So many of the people were young and had never worked in a real company. They bought all of it. I realized after I got there, it was a cult. (laughs) 
Now, summer camp started as an event on the land of some of Neumann's friends, but in 2017, it moved to the English countryside. Using some of the billions of new money pumped in via SoftBank's $4.4 billion infusion, they flew employees in from all around the world. Attendees reported that they were allowed to walk up to the bar and ask for multiple entire bottles of wine at once. People played Edward Forty Hands yeah. with fancy bottles of rosé, which is what Fuck I would yeah. do. Yeah. 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 That part sounds great. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's your God-given duty. When you realize realize the the liquor is free and expensive and they'll just hand you bottles that's what you do have you ever done that take yes. 40s to your hands yeah that a boy the worst thing i've done in fucking ljubljana slovenia was you can buy two liters of wine in a gigantic juice box for about a dollar and a half mm-hmm. um and you mix it with equal parts pepsi and it is the worst idea doesn't Terrible. sound like a good idea Terrible. Do you duct tape those to your hands? <laughs> I no. We just drank. Oh, okay. um, I blacked out throwing an empty bottle on top of a stranger's roof, and I came to alone without any of my friends near me, receiving a falafel from somebody, <laughs> having already paid with my phone gone. Nine in the morning, like eight hours later. Just it, it's the first time, only time that's ever happened. We're just like I black out and I come back in the middle of a transaction. Yeah. Wow. And you uh, could won the friendship contest, I assume. I so had yeah. no, I was yeah. alone. Oh, uh, no. I had lost the friendship contest. The prize was a falafel. <laughs> mm. I uh, I did that once. I taped duct tape forties to my hands. Oh, uh, I've done I Edward did. forty hands, just yeah. not with wine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible because you eventually have to pee. Yeah, and, and Steel Reserve isn't something anyone should drink two of. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely true. Yeah. Me and my buddies Tour also one. had a thing we did uh, called Freedom 40s. That was you have to chug a 40 in nine minutes and 11 seconds or else the terrorists <laughs> win. <laughs> it's shockingly hard to do. Because 40s are ghastly. Yeah, tasting. yeah. It's literally the best way to forget. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now... One employee later told the New York Times that she realized it was time to quit WeWork when she woke up in a teepee at summer camp to find one of her colleagues outside pissing on her tent. That employee later told New York Magazine, talk to any community manager under 24 and it's the greatest weekend of your life, but I am not here to get peed on. Now, I'm going to quote one more time from that New York Magazine article discussing the 2018 summer camp, which, spoilers, would prove to be the last one. At last year's event, according to a report in Property Magazine, a British real estate publication, Neumann sat on stage next to his wife and McKelvey as the crowd sang, Ole, Ole, Ole. A WeWork employee from India started chanting, Let's go, WeWork, let's go, while another from California screamed, You're changing the world, Adam. We love you. Augusto Contreras, a WeWork employee from Mexico City, proposed to his girlfriend next to a dodgeball tournament. I felt like I was surrounded by my extended family, he told the company blog. He had been at WeWork for seven months. So they well, find the people who are vulnerable to this, right. and they're very vulnerable to right, it. Right, right, right. When you were said that it was the last one, I expected that story to be something like really tragic or like mm. fire festival-y, but then <laughs> no. just, it was just like, no, ah, you just, just perform there, though. <laughs> You're sucking in people who need what this pretends to provide. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. really provide yeah. it, but that's coming later. Now, that Fast Company article I've quoted from a couple of times in this episode uh, was released in 2016, and it provides even more detail on the profoundly culty way that Adam presented himself at company events. Quote, a Beatles chorus bounces off the bare concrete walls of what was once J.P. Morgan's headquarters. Come together right now. The nearly thousand chattering WeWork employees who fill the event space look toward the stage, expecting CEO Adam Neumann to appear from the wings at any second. Instead, he sprints down the center aisle and giddy conversations evolve into a cheer. When John Lennon trills over me, Neumann leaps onto the stage, sticking the landing. So this is the way this guy's presenting himself to his employees, and it kind of seems like a lot of them made it up. Yeah. Wall Street has already come out by this yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They should know better. They should know better, right? But people never learn We've about this. Yeah. so many movies about this guy. I mean, guy. World War II came out, and we all know what happened in 2016, <laughs> so... Have you... Uh, this is for Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever watched, like, uh, the presentations that, like, uh, MLMs, like the multi level uh, yeah. marketing company? Oh, yeah, company? yeah, yeah. It's, this this is exactly very that. similar. Yeah. I've it, watched a number of those, like uh, those seminars and uh, the the gatherings that they do, and it it, ha- it that has all of those those uh, signs. I I want to you know I, I try to repeat frequently that I think everybody has a kind of grift that they're vulnerable to. Yeah. No matter how smart, because it has nothing to do with intelligence. It's it has everything to do with the fact that everybody has 
needs and particularly secret needs that even they don't know how to voice a lot of the time. And if someone other than you, particularly predators, what they're good at is seeing things in others that they don't see in themselves, but that are present. If they're able to pick that out, they'll get you. Mm -hmm. Um, It doesn't matter how smart and well-read you are. They'll get you. Um, We all have a thing. And Adam found a group of people who I think – we're raised on stories like Apple's, you know, the, the history of the Apple Corp, the Google yeah. Corporation, these companies yeah, yeah, yeah. that like changed the world and had these like grand visions <sighs> and like these in, uh, uh, legendary leaders um, and everybody got super fucking rich too. And Adam knew how to create the feeling that that's what was going on here. Mm. It wasn't. Yeah. It was just leasing yeah. office space. Like, yeah. It wasn't literally like Google. That That is like a revolution. We organized yeah. the world's information. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Apple. We changed the fundamentally the way that daily life exists for billions of people. Yeah, those are companies where you really can't oversell at least the impact of what's happening. Right. These people are leasing office space, but, but, but he's made it feel kids. like that. Yeah, but there's kid that that is part of why it felt yeah. like that. It is it is like he watched that uh, Apple commercial where the the uh, hammer is thrown into the Ooh. giant screen and all the all the drones are there, and he was like. What if I made all those drones? Those guys were <laughs> super cool. Yeah, that seems like yeah. that's the thing I want to be. I want to throw a hammer in shit. That'll there, everything will fall down. <laughs> It'll be terrible. It's hard for me not to think that like none of this would be possible without booze. Like it, yeah. it, it's like there's it's not for nothing that alcohol is in every story you yeah. read about we were. It, it really seems very the inflated the only way to have achieved the inflated sense of self confidence that was clearly a major aspect of this would have been to give everyone free guns, which is how my cult's gonna work. <laughs> I thought it was machetes. Machetes, yeah, machetes don't guns? do it enough, man. You, it's really, it's got to be an AK-47. I understand. No, that makes you feel like a revolutionary, like holding a Kalashnikov. That's what I hear. And then we're going to shove people off of buildings. <laughs> Adam Neumann at first. <laughs> from, but, from each according to the bullets they have, to each according to the bullets they deserve. Is that <laughs> yeah, no, actually, actually, that's that's really good? <laughs> I feel like I should also abstain from this bit. <laughs> and here's our special third guest, FBI agent Don. <laughs> Chicago's oh, there's finest. There's actually a lot more than one of you. Okay. <laughs> Joining us right now, the entire Department of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Not fans. Now. And they have deep dish pizza. <laughs> I refuse to try it. That's fine. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. yeah, don't worry about it. Every everyone I know from Chicago has said that it's <laughs> fine. The only people not from Chicago are like, "Oh, you got to try the deep yeah. pizza." We're all fine. With yeah, it. yeah. Now, it's like Cali Mex. It's not as good as Tech Mex. I'll say it. I lived in both. Fair I'm enough. Not nearly as good. I have no dog in the pizza fight. You know, speaking of dog fights. Not speaking of dog <laughs> fights. Um, it's the beginning to the worst sentence. In the speaking world. of dog fights, you know who would never train dogs to fight? Who's that? The, at one point, at one point, you probably would assume he wouldn't. That's yeah, true. At, true. when he was five, yeah, six, sure. And like a five-year-old Michael Vick, <laughs> <laughs> someone who is incapable of hosting dog fights, <laughs> is the sponsors of this show. <laughs> Silky. One of the better ad transitions on this series. Off we go. We're back. Oh, what I loved about those products and services was that none of them were for dog fights. That's true. (laughs) It's true. Sometimes you just can't abandon the dog fight bit when you should. No, it's hard to. It's hard to abandon the dog fight bit. But it's also rare these days for me to guest on a podcast that isn't sponsored by a dog fighting (laughs) ring. It is. is, Well, and I I just should say, if you use the promo code BASTARDS, (laughs) you get access to the 24-hour streaming dog fights, all the best dog fights. We got chihuahuas. And all the sabermetrics (laughs) about, like, the... uh, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You get into Wins over dog fighting league. Right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay. So, uh, now, shortly after Adam Neumann founded WeWork, he'd made what seemed to be at the time an impossible promise that his company would one day beat out J.P. Morgan and become the largest private office tenant in the city of New York. Given that New York is New York, that's a pretty huge deal. Like so, J.P. Morgan was prior uh, yeah, the the yeah. most office space, the I'm gigantic saying. bank worth all of the money in the world. Yeah, yeah. Is, so saying, I'm going to beat them. 
that's a big that's a big thing right, to right. to hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in 2018, this dream became a reality. We work now leased five million square feet over 50 locations across the city. So all of it. still not making money, correct? Not a profit. They're oh, making money, man, but not net. That, I not said, net. I said <laughs> revenue. Yeah. Now, those locations, as we got into a little bit, were leased with venture capital money, not actual profits made by the company. And those offices were kept full due to free rent offers and lease buyouts, which is not a strategy that can continue forever. Man, you could just give people homes. You could give people homes for less, it does, and it would it, make more sense. It does feel like people talk about, like, we can't afford universal health care, and then it's like, how much money did we work blow through? Just... Blue. Like even outside of how much money that we spend on the F thirty five, which is actually vastly higher. Like, yeah, sure. But, yeah. but but still. <laughs> and if he like uh, housed people instead of all these offices, those people would get tons of booze. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. They so they'd be awesome. drunk as shit. <laughs> Now, SoftBank's massive investment seemed to confirm Adam's grand boast about the importance of his company, and his ego swelled consequently. He started talking to colleagues about his desire for eternal life. Oh, no. He, mm-hmm. This is like moon base all over again. Yeah. Nope. Here we go. Nope. Yep. Nope. Yep, this is where it begins. <laughs> this is where Dan's ears perk up. <laughs> He invested in Life Biosciences, a life extension startup to further this end. The company mission is to create a future where age-related decline is not a fact of life. Adam increasingly threw out wild ideas for ways WeWork could expand to areas well outside of its wheelhouse. Sometime after 2017, he started talking about starting an airline called WeFly. It's, it's this presumably. type of shit where you're, you like, you look in history mm-hmm. and you're like, how is it that people got sold on fucking alchemy and the philosopher's yeah. stone and eternal life? And then you look at that guy and you're like, there's oh, they're assholes. still doing it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're still, still, doing, they're, they're still yeah. doing it. In, in fairness, we fly kind of like that. It's that a good name. It's a good, it's a good, yeah. it's, yeah. it's a fine enough name for yeah. an airline. It's just like, what's your experience renting buildings to companies? What do you want to do? R- run an airline. <laughs> What is an airplane but an office? A sky and, office. Yeah, exactly. That is actually where these episodes were written. Is, <laughs> so, the, the, exactly, the, Robert. The, the WoW Airlines in Iceland that used to exist. The World of Warcraft the, Airlines. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And there was Wizz Air, they which is the started, worst airline. They started as like a bike share company, and their next move was like, mm, I think we'll run an airline. <laughs> Turns out those skills do not translate. Don't translate, no. Weird. Wow. Now... <laughs> Adam increasingly threw out wild ideas for ways WeWork could expand into areas. Well, outside. Oh, right. I read that a little bit. Oh, yeah. So We Fly is one. There was also talk of We Sail and something called We Sleep, which I have no idea what that was supposed to be. He briefly discussed mattresses. Yeah, maybe mattresses, maybe like a sleep lab. He briefly discussed his ambition to become Israel's prime minister before amending that to say that if he ran for any office, it would be for president of the world. That's an office. Cool. cool. Part of how you know this was a little bit culty is that if my boss, this podcast, Jack O'Brien, mm-hmm. someone I have great respect for, I've worked with him 11, 12 years now, the vast majority, basically all of my working life. If he told me seriously that if he ever ran for office, it would be for president of the world, and it wasn't like a bad joke, I would just start punching. And I love Jack. Yeah. But that's what you do yeah, yeah, when yeah. you care about someone and they say shit, you just start hitting them. It's a, it's a mentality that needs yeah. to be gone from it, them. It needs to be hit. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you just don't do that. Especially when it's paired with like, I'm trying to put money into life extension technology yeah. and <laughs> I, I want, want a Mars forever base. forever and be president yeah. of the world. Yeah. Well, I'm going to yeah. hit you with this brick. Like, <laughs> this is what needs to happen now. You have become a problem <laughs> yeah. and I have a visceral yeah. response yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah. You can be president of the world with one eye. That's what you <laughs> yeah. do. You will not have both of your eyes while you do it. I will make sure of that. I think it is inevitable that if there is a president of the world, they will have one eye. Like, yeah. There will be an it's, eye patch it's, situation. Because it, 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 it'll be a dystopian, like, uh, water world type. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, was, I was going with, uh, what, what, what is his name? Uh, D-Boy from Friday, the president of the world in Fifth Element. Sure. Yeah. That's a great president of that's the world. The one, that's the yeah. one that I'm all about. I, I will say, as an anarchist, I have a lot of different conflicting always shifting ideas about about how I think the world ought to be. One thing I'm certain of is that based on my ideology, if I ever think someone might become the president of the world, I'm going to try to hit them with a brick. I think that's fair. Mm-hmm. Although I, I also think that... <laughs> I'm going to try to brick them. Yeah. I, I think that anytime you hear someone say, like, I want to be president of the world, like, 
it, what scares me about that is not the possibility they'll become president of the world. Mm-hmm. It's just what that implies yeah, about their mental it's the state. Ego. Yeah, it's like because it's like this is this is trouble. Like I would I would have a, a very negative reaction to somebody who was like I'm going to be president. Yeah, because that's a bad thing to want to be. Yeah, um, but somebody wants to be president of the world. That's a bricking. Yeah, yeah. That's a bricking. It's, dubi- it's a dubious get brick. uh, mentality. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the the truth is the only people that should be in power are the people who don't want to be in power, and that's why we're fucked. Mm-hmm. Now, all of this we've been talking about for several minutes now was a paragraph, and I haven't read the last sentence, and oh, it's no. the most insufferable <laughs> sentence. Mike down, Jordan. <laughs> in the 2018 summer camp, Adam Neumann promised that WeWork would solve the problem of children without parents and then eradicate world hunger. <laughs> We're going to kill children without parents. <laughs> this is just start gassing orphans. Yeah. They shan't be hungry, though. <laughs> exactly. WeWork's value soared past $10 billion, then past $20 billion. Adam Neumann was now, on paper at least, a billionaire himself. So there, there was no indication of how he planned to solve those problems? No, none whatsoever. Okay. Well, a little bit. We'll get to, we'll, we'll get to that okay. a little bit. Right. We'll get to that a little I'll bit. I'll be patient. a medium post right after mm-hmm. Elizabeth Warren. And Made a white paper. Yeah, yeah. You know, he actually, if he had, that would have been more thought than I think he gave to it. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Uh, he immediately started bragging after becoming a billionaire, again, on paper, uh, that his personal goal was to become the world's first trillionaire. Do again, we not have brick one? Him, brick him good. No. No, we don't have one. Oh. No, it's no one's really even close. Hard. Jeff Bezos is, uh, like, Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates are, like, at 120 million, something yeah. like that. Okay. Like billion, yeah, That's yeah. not even all that yeah. close to no. a trillion. I have so little interest in uh, money stuff that I, I just assumed we had a couple. I feel yeah. like it is a matter of like the survival of civilization level importance that we not let anyone reach that level. Yeah, I, I feel like it's a matter of survival that yeah. we don't allow billionaires to exist until no. I mean, know, we, we, we've, next we've year. got to stop yeah, that too. Yeah, that's but, gotta um, go. Yeah, it, that's a brickin. If you want to be a trillionaire, that's a brickin. I, I see a shirt in your future. Yeah. That's a brickin. <laughs> that's a brickin. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm. A, you want to be? A tr- I'm going to hit you with a brick. Yeah. I'm j- I just got to do it. <laughs> yeah. If you were a stand-up comedian touring the Midwest, you would sell oh, yeah. a lot of oh, that's yeah. a brickin mm. shirts. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the reality of Adam's wealth was less impressive. He made millions as WeWork CEO, because that's what CEOs do. And he made millions more from having the company leased from properties he owned. But he also had borrowed more than $740 million against his stock in the company, a thing that is legal for some reason. He sold hundreds of millions of dollars worth of his own shares. This was often done in a very shady fashion. For example, in 2015, he sold tens of millions of dollars worth of shares. Then he had the company launch a stock buyback program to buy employee shares of stock. The buyback program offered employees a per share price that was markedly lower than what Neumann had been paid for his stock. Mm. And since Adam's stock sales weren't public, WeWork's employees didn't realize they were being screwed to subsidize Adam's lifestyle. Mm. Man, I feel like all those guys who are like, okay, here's what we'll do to increase productivity. Create a cult and fuck over everybody we work with could really be served by like reading all the literature where they're like, if you pay people a living wage and give them benefits and give them time off, they will work more for you on their own. Jordan, that is not how you become president of the world. That's it's fair. definitely not. Is it, you uh, know how you become president of the world? Crazy shit. It's racism. Yeah. It's racism. Oh, no. <laughs> now, because it's the world, it's a number of different racisms because you got to be able to. It's be a balance act. act. Mexicans, yeah. Tibetans. Yeah. You get a really all over the world racism. Right. I feel it's like really you start a lot with of religion racism. and then move to race. But, That's the, my advice. but even then, you've really? got to. Oh, yeah. I, I wonder. I wonder what it'll be. I wonder. We might see it in our lifetimes, and I'm really, I'm what really curious. Yeah, I'm really curious to see whether or not it's a, re- a racism or an, an a religious well, bigotry yeah, thing. Yeah. Well, no, I just would, which one, which playing to which, which sort of bigotry yeah, wins, yeah, yeah. you know? Because I feel like it'll be one president who's like fuck all these different individual races that I've calculated will maximize my vote. And right. one president will be like, fuck this specific yeah, religion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like so what, it'll be like a, like a focus-tested racism versus <laughs> instinctual racism. I mean, it's actually going to come down to Hillary versus Trump again, very frustratingly. <laughs> the MPAA has to review what yeah. type of racism in a bunch of focus groups. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> now, During this time, 
Adam and Rebecca bought a $90 million collection of homes around the world, including a 60-acre estate in Westchester County. Glad to see those kids uh, made it. That Mm -hmm. marriage worked. It did. I expected a divorce by now. You know, it's weird. When you have hundreds of millions of dollars, it's easy to stay married. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Which really speaks to how unpleasant Jeff Bezos' marriage must have been. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, I'm not going to comment on that anymore um yeah they had a 21 million dollar mansion in the bay area with a room shaped like a guitar they hired several nannies for their children two personal assistants and a chef even as much money as adam was worth uh his spending was incredibly excessive and so was we works spending while adam's craziest ideas like establishing an airline never went into production the company did embark on a number of side hustles at his direction they created we live essentially a very expensive apartment complex with no privacy adam said this would drive suicide rates down because no one feels alone elevator talk (laughs) (laughs) i'm getting really uncomfortable but is, that is kind of the natural progression. If they're like yeah. making this company, if He's it is like company towns, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you've created this. Like this is the workspace we now mm-hmm. own. That why wouldn't you then get into like now yeah. we're getting into your living? Yeah, I tried to create a workspace slash living space. So why not just yeah. create a living space slash yeah. workspace? They also created a gym. I think it was called We Rise. Um, and that should be their bakery. That should be their bakery. I know, I know, missed opportunities. And then they created. We grow. This was a school that Adam hoped would eventually expand into a project to house all the world's orphans. Jesus. Adam, oh, <laughs> oh, man. Adam said, this fucking sentence, you guys. Adam said of We Grow's plan to save the orphans, we want to solve this problem and give them a new family, the We Work family. I'm speechless. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> what a, what kind of person says that? A crazy, like a just a just a straight up insane person. Yeah. I wonder if there was a moment. I wonder this because this is this is the quite, like in the movie of this uh, this dude's life. Does he have that Scarface moment where it's like you can see him just go past that point and it's like everything past this is just going to be insane. It was probably that night on the roof. It was that night on the roof, maybe. Yeah, but he might have been that night on the roof. Yeah, I can get people to do anything if they'll yeah. drink this There's this poop beer. Right Could be. We start, with the, moon, we start mm-hmm. with the thing on the roof and then. Oh, this is going to be an insufferable movie, isn't it? That makes him into like a cool. Uh, God, it'll be another damn it. social see, the network. I want to do it like uh, Wall Street, but it turned out that even when you satirize yeah. these evil people, people are going to be like, oh, the, there shit, needs that's a great idea. To, there should be a law that when you do a movie like Wolf of Wall Street, there needs to be a seven-minute scene wherein the character shits himself. Yeah. <laughs> Just really unbecoming. Yeah. Just make him embarrassing. And make it uncomfortable for the audience. You know, it should be hard to get over that hump. You should expect it to be over like three minutes in, yeah. and then it just keeps and not going. And like, not like yeah, funny, yeah. not like the vomiting no, scene no. in Team America. Like, just, just bad. Mm-hmm. Just a bad thing to be a part of. Yeah. Because it happened. I, f- I feel like that's a regulation we could pass. I think so. Yeah. I think so. It's bi- a bipartisan appeal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, shit, the, the movie <laughs> Shitting Bill has passed through both houses it's and not, is now on the president's desk. He was reportedly <laughs> unable to sign today as he was too busy chopping off his enormous poop so that it could flush in less than 10 flushes. <laughs> <laughs> that did happen. That's yeah. just a, that's just part of politics just, in America. That's just where we you live. can't remove that from the history books. It's where we live now. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it's gonna be really funny if we get past as a nation him being in office and don't collapse into a civil war to hear people talk about the dignity of the presidency again. Like really, it's tough. gonna it's gonna be like I hope I get to be on TV at some point when that happens and just gonna be. Like, left (laughs) did you hear the poop speech i mean historically the dignity of the presidency was lost you know i I guess after andrew it was was always it was always an illusion but even jackson presented himself in a stately manner and stuff like like a six foot tall wheel of cheese is where i get off the off board (laughs) on uh on the dignity of Uh, that's the that's the best thing he did yeah we called six foot tall wheel of cheese I feel There's like that's different cheese. than than accusing everyone else in the country of needing 15 flushes <laughs> to get their poop down the toilet. <laughs> and every everyone listening knowing like you couldn't get a poop down the toilet. Could you, <laughs> could you the president? <laughs> it's like you told on yourself there with this speech. It's me. Like, bad. No one else is having trouble with this. Yeah. <laughs> 
and here I am having pooped for four days, and it takes ten flushes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can, you can say that like uh, the office is undignified historically forever, but I think there is a value to a shared illusion. Yeah, and that's kind of gone. No, I think. There's a value, but it's not yeah. a good or a bad thing. No. It's just a value it's, in the same way that an AR-15 has a value. Uh, yeah. Right, right, right. Now, when we last before we went on this digression, I'd said that uh, Adam uh, wanted to to solve the problem of of, of ch- parentless children and give them a new family. That we right. Were that's why we went on the digression because that that's is fucking crazy. It is. It's a nuts that's fucking crazy. sentence. Now, before we work could house the world's orphans, though <laughs> we're going to put them on trains. It has nobody's ever done this yeah. before, and we'll send it all the way across the nation. You know, it's better than that. Yeah. <laughs> um. It's better than that, but dumber. Okay. Um, we train. <laughs> in order to make We Grow get to the point where it could house all of the world's orphans, it was going to start as a luxury boutique school for the children of rich people, charging the very wealthy in New York City thirty-six to $42,000 a year to educate their small children. <laughs> well, this seems, this seems like the opposite. So we're going to solve... <laughs> the world's homeless orphan problem with, by making it impossible for them to afford this. With Waldorf I education. Him, like, I imagine him like flying down to a group of Syrian refugees, fleeing like a barrel bombing in Idlib, and like putting a hand on one of their shoulders and saying, in like 20 years when the cost comes down, we're oh, going to take care of you. One. Oh, yeah. Right uh, now? Absolutely. No way. For now, it's no just way. Sean Penn's kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And they're getting a great education. Absolutely. Yeah. I believe it. Do you know who Sean Penn is? Oh, you're dead. Mm, oh, sorry well. about that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, We Grow was Rebecca Neumann's project, his wife. She'd been a core part of WeWork from the beginning, of course. In 2017, the company had hired SoulCycle founder Julie Rice as their chief brand officer. But when Rebecca came back from maternity leave later that year, she decided she wanted the title for herself. And took it, so Julie well, had to I mean, quit. Okay, according to WeWork's established business practices, she should have been fired. Yeah, and demoted. I'm I'm disappointed by this. She was. <laughs> That's what happened. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because she was originally the chief brand yeah. officer, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So. But then Rebecca got it. Yeah. Well, then now I support this decision. Apparently, Rebecca is somewhat famous among WeWorkers for firing people she met and got bad vibes from. One example is a mechanic for the company Gulfstream Private Jet, who was shit canned because Rebecca quote didn't like his energy. So she's the kind of person we are all we all like. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, she was the perfect person to design a brand new school from the ground up. Rebecca, of course, had no relevant experience in education. And also, what if children and running a school? What if oh. these kids have bad vibes? Well, yeah, then then you just kill that's, them. That's you throw them off the top of that building. It's real trouble. For someone who's like so. I've always felt mm. what was missing from public education was more capriciousness. Yeah, yeah. and good vibes. Yeah, mm-hmm. good vibes. Yeah, she had nowhere else in experience, uh, but she didn't think that really mattered. She told interviewers that her vision for WeGrow was a new conscious entrepreneurial school committed to unleashing every child's superpowers. At the school's opening, she reportedly stated, in my book, there's no reason why children in elementary schools can't be launching their own businesses. Hmm. Labor laws? <laughs> 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 Not if they're running shit, Jordan. <laughs> I mean, if Not you mean like, I'm gonna hire a bunch of eight year olds to work in this coal mine. I mean, fucking nail it. If you want to do a school where you're like, hey, you, it's cool to do a lemonade stand and learn some lessons from it. I don't know how I'm not going to die on that hill mm-hmm. arguing against that. But it sounds like that's not what she's talking about. No, no, she wants them making their own we. Didn't the Olsen twins even wait until they were 18 to start their fashion brand or whatever? I think they did. Yes. And I, I think that maybe working their entire childhood had some negative mental health implications, no. but I don't want to speak no. for them. <laughs> it's, it's telling that kind of the best case scenario for children who work a lot as children is Macaulay Culkin. Yeah. Well, his best role was in Party Monster, which I'm sure has He's fucking to do. awesome He's in Party Monster. In Party Monster. It's, that's sure a, that's a great movie and he's great in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's great. <laughs> I like Macaulay Culkin, uh, and I'm glad he made it out. He's uh, also good and saved. He's also good and saved. It's tough, is what I'm saying, being yeah. a child who works heavily as yeah. a child. It's not Maybe it's not good for children. <laughs> <laughs> maybe sh- children shouldn't work a lot. Give me, give me the backing of thousands upon thousands of psychological studies, and then I will listen. Yeah. You know what psychologically would be awesome for kids in school? 
fucking looking well, like, at payroll uh, <laughs> inventory. Because well, it's like you talk about like 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 child actors and actresses. Um, obviously, a lot of them have very negative experiences. Yeah. It, it's very it, it's a damaging thing, which yeah. is why like we have so much respect for like Daniel Radcliffe's parents, who are like, no, we're not going to let our kid move to fucking Los Angeles. Right, right, like right. you either film it in, in the like because we're just not going to put him through that. Um, it's tough. It does things to them, and they're not in charge. They actually have a lot of people there to support them, and it still is a very difficult to deal with healthily. Having a kid managing payroll, yeah, yeah. having a kid managing like debt and like venture capital, and like what a bad idea! It seems <laughs> like woefully stupid. Now, we grow launched in the fall of 2018. It was housed in WeWork's headquarters. Problems immediately cropped up due to the fact that Rebecca and her colleagues had failed to anticipate minor details like paying the school security guards. HR had apparently forgotten to add them to payroll. So this was <laughs> an immediate bump in the log. That'll happen. Sometimes you don't pay the people, the little people. When you're well, trying to start a school for entrepreneurs, sure, you're going to make mistakes that entrepreneurs shouldn't make. To be <laughs> fair. Under no circumstances yeah, should not make. To be fair, a second grader was in charge of HR. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> and security. Yeah. Yeah. So these things will happen. Now. It's a learning experience. Other problem. <laughs> Other problems came as a result of Becca's own peculiar preferences. She made a rule that parents were allowed to wait in the school lounge to pick up children, but nannies had to wait outside in the vestibule. This was reportedly because Rebecca didn't want her own children's nannies to enter the school. One person close to the school told interviewers the whole thing was about her and what was right for her children. Right, right, right. Yeah. What if I made a school based on Downton Abbey? Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Rebecca herself told Fast Company something similar. She claimed that the inspiration for We Grow had come when she and Adam were looking for fancy rich people schools for their five kids and, quote, we couldn't find the school that we felt would nurture growth. These children come into the world. They are very evolved. They are very special. They're spiritual. They're, They're all natural children. entrepreneurs, natural humanitarians. And then it seems like we squash it all out of them in the education system. Well, it sounds familiar. <laughs> I can't think of anybody. This is, th th this is very reminiscent of like kind of uh, a lot of the extreme right uh, homeschool yeah. Yeah. kind of. Uh, yeah. This is. There's some aspects of a lot of different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In that. Now, like everything else the Neumanns embarked on, We Grow put style before substance. The school was designed by a famous architect and featured a vertical garden and whatever acoustic clouds are on the ceiling. WeWork bought an alternative college startup, Mission U, in order to hire a COO for WeGrow who presumably knew something about teaching kids. Curriculum included classes on mindfulness, yoga, meditation, and farming. All meals were vegetarian. I don't have any problem with the last two parts. I just mm. include them for context. Uh, mindfulness and meditation? Yeah. Maybe not a great oh. idea for teaching kids. I don't know. Nine-year-olds love to Can't sit hurt. quiet in cold spaces. Yeah. That's what they're for. We'll talk about mindfulness in another episode. As we work matured and started expanding, we're yeah. doing mindfulness this yeah. week. Fuck that shit. <laughs> As Robert we Evans takes it, down meditation. Don't think. <laughs> I wouldn't have lit nearly as many fires as I've lit in my life if I if I thought. Yeah. Right. And right. I've learned so much from those fires. What happens when insulation <laughs> catches on fire? What happens when drywall catches on fire? You're, what happens when shingles catch on fire? Basically, what a happens scientist. when people catch on fire? <laughs> All lessons I wouldn't have had if I'd thought more. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. All right. I, I retract. I retract now, my support of meditation. <laughs> As WeWork matured and started expanding into every conceivable realm, Adam began to revamp his ideas about the we generation. He modified this to what he called me plus we. There we go. That's what I was waiting for. I literally was about to say that he's going to say it's the me generation, but never mind. You. you and then he's going to get sued by Pepsi. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He explained at a WeWork summit, quote, on one hand, you want to be your own person have your own goals. And on the other hand, you understand that being a part of something greater than yourself is an amazing opportunity and actually makes you stronger. Now, Adam had earlier claimed that WeWork's multi-billion dollar valuation was much more based on our energy and spirituality than it is on a multiple of revenue, pointing out that his real estate leasing business was not a real estate business, but instead a community company. We're not selling office space. We're selling community. It's amazing that the rich thing people, that can't be sold. Rich people are all 
always telling us that it's just not about money, Robert. It's only it's about, about money community. for, again, people who will die immediately without yeah. a little bit more well, of it. Right, but we can put them on trains and solve homelessness or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. I've it, noticed at this point, like, there's been literally no conversation at all about, like, people having good experiences in WeWork offices. <laughs> Or like I'm that sure actual, they exist. That actual yeah. community that he intends to build actually. There's a lot built. of turnover. It's not like early Apple where it's like people stay for fucking ever. Mm-hmm. Um, or a lot of stuff you hear about early Google. There's a ton of turnover. But he's not even talking about this like great thing that he's bringing into the world being about the employees of WeWork. It's the yeah. people who rent the office space. And it's always vague and undefined idea yeah. in the community too because it's not real. He's no. again he's selling this to the bosses. But I mean, in reality, if you're living, if you're working at a WeWork space, it's just a very mundane office space. Yeah. Like if you're working at WeWork, but they have caves. All the, the Slightly kind of better shit, uh, interior you know? design. Yeah, yeah. You know. I worked. I worked at a shared office space for for a while, and it was just it was fine. Everybody was there. Yeah. Everybody I I, I could never like I don't know I I can't be productive in a space where I can't wander around shirtless with an AR-15 strapped to my chest. Right, 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 right. Um, we all have our process. Strapped or taped? Strapped, ta- strapped, strapped. No, 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 no. Okay. I, I have a very nice sling. Um, now, several. Okay. Um, you know who doesn't sell slings for AR-15s? <laughs> Maybe. Yet, although we're courting them. Yes. The Products and Services okay, that sponsored this show. We're back. <laughs> We're talking about a thing that we won't talk about after this will be a mystery for the nine of you who are listening after that uh-huh. digression about dog fighting. Um, <laughs> Strangely enough, Michael Vick is still listening. Yeah, Michael Vick, big supporter of the pod. Really huge <laughs> into the podcast. Uh, and you know what? I support north of 60% of what he's done with his life. A lot of passes. A lot of good. passes. We're good. A lot of runs. Paid his rent on time for a spell. He was a good football player. <laughs> I don't know anything about Michael Vick other than the dog fighting. And football. Those are the only two things I know as well. I, I don't know anything about the football. I know yeah, he was a footballer, sure. but he's I don't know. I, I can't analyze him. He's him. pretty good. Below 60%. He's run for more than 100 yards in it. No, okay, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> Nerd. So he was good. He was yeah. good at the balls. Oh, he was very good at the balls. Okay, that's good. That's good. Well, no, because of the dog fighting. But now I understand more. Yeah. Now, Adam Neumann's most constant refrain when he talked about we work to his employees was this. And this is a quote. We are here in order to change the world. Nothing less than that interests me. And for a while... It seemed like that really might be happening. By 2018, WeWork had 466,000 members working out of 485 locations in more than 100 cities in 28 countries. It had more than doubled its revenue every year of its existence. Not only was it Manhattan's largest tenant, but in central London it controlled more space than anyone but the British government. So... This is like like you can't overstate like how much this company fucking expands, right? Right, right. right. Well, chances are, if you own anything in London, you're an evil person. Yes. Yes. Including the British government. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It seems to be all the metrics of like success are all just sort of geographical and yes, and yes. like and not based on actually profit anything mm-hmm. other than just based on and and they don't own these buildings. They're yeah. leasing them. Yeah, they're leasing them. This so even even the geographical brag is kind of a liability. Yeah, that's I feel like you can't be the most profitable profitable company if you're essentially a middleman. Seems like that shouldn't be possible, huh? Yeah, Seems right. like you're almost offering nothing. Yeah. Huh. You're just in the way of getting a thing. I wonder if this will ever crash and burn in a page or two. No, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's going to go great. As the summer of 2018 rolled on, there were increasing signs of trouble within the company. One warning came out of what could be plausibly described as Adam's good intentions. His desire to ban the eating of meat. 
or at least the subsidizing of the eating of meat by his company. By exchanging it for tequila. <laughs> from the Wall Street Journal. When Mr. Vegan Neumann announced tequila. in July 2018 via video call from Israel that the company was banning meat, executives in New York were caught off guard. With little explanation from Mr. Neumann, a group huddled around to determine a rationale. They settled on sustainability and the mechanics of what would be banned and how. They determined employees couldn't expense meals with meat, and that, but that they could eat it in company offices so long as the company didn't pay. Former employees said they have since seen Mr. Neumann eat meat. Hmm. So he gets a hair up his ass that eating meat is bad. Fine. I'm even down with the idea of a big company being like, we're not going to use company money to support the eating of meat anymore. Good. Fine. Yeah, uh, yeah the but defining clearly, characteristic of the aristocracy is caprice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the, like, the important thing here is not the meat thing. It's the idea that like this guy has an idea yep. and now what is a multi-billion dollar company changes has to change on a dime. Yep. And but, that's not good. But I honestly think he's like not going far enough. Like still letting people eat meat in the office. Like that, you know. I still letting people I, eat yeah, I don't know period. if you could legally do that to be honest. Yeah, it'd probably be tough. I don't know if you could legally stop people on their lunch breaks from eating whatever they wanted. But back when I worked at Groupon, yeah. like people would, uh, you know, the microwave fish stuff. And, and that's just a, be a little complete disaster. Different. But you couldn't stop them from eating fish. You just can't microwave it. Man, I'd like to. You know what's fun about laws in America mm -hmm. is technically a lot of things you can't do, but uh, yeah, you just do it and people won't bother you. That is true. Yeah. And I have a story to tell you about a machete and a nap the bomb. <laughs> but <laughs> when we work prepared to go public, they basically bribed the major exchanges by promising to list on them if they would ban meat and single-use plastics from their cafeterias. The president of the New York Stock Exchange agreed to cut out plastics but refused to remove meat. NASDAQ turned them down but offered to create a new index, the We 50 of companies committed to sustainability. So that's... Okay. You're a big uh, hating on plastic yeah. uh, fork guy. I'm not guy. against that. No, that's fine. No, no, no. I'm absolutely yeah. fine with that. But that with this dude, that's like, in, and we're going to take the money we save from that and invest it in fracking. Like, this, yeah, this yeah, dude's yeah. fucked up. Like, I have no trust in him. Yeah, and it's it's uh, more of a, uh, like, he agrees to cut that requirement out if they create a, a, a NASDAQ index about sustainable companies named after we right, work. Right, right. He's got to cut it out with the we stuff. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big fan of they rebranded uh, the weed company essentially company. extorting mm -hmm. people for climate justice. That's, yeah. that's fine, I guess. So, uh, WeWork had gotten off the ground at this point and secured major investments because of its charismatic founder. But now that the company had matured into a multi-billion dollar enterprise, it was still run as an extension of the personal will of Adam Neumann. In November of 2018, Adam showed up late and profoundly hung over to a meeting with Khaldun Khalifa al-Mubarak, the CEO and managing director of the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Abu Dhabi. Hey. This was a critical meeting. WeWork was on track to lose hundreds of millions of dollars that year, and Mubarak had gotten nervous about all of the money that he had gambled on the company's success. Adam's job at this meeting was to reassure Mubarak. The fact that WeWork CEO couldn't stay sober long enough to take a meeting worth potentially billions of dollars rightfully angered the board. Well, that'll happen. That'll happen. That'll happen. Neumann couldn't have cared less. In the summer of 2018, he'd worked out a deal with Masayoshi and SoftBank to sell the bulk of WeWork's stock to that company for $16 billion. To be honest, this is the only relatable thing that I've heard about this guy Showing so up to far. a meeting hungover? Too hungover, even though it's a really important I've meeting. never been sober in a meeting. <laughs> Finally, yeah. I'm like, all right, I get this guy a little bit at least. Yeah. <laughs> but it is like, you know, I'm going to be honest. If there were billions of dollars on the line... I'd probably show up sober to the meeting. Probably. Yeah, I got a self-destructive streak. I think I would. I think part of me would really want to tank this meeting on a on a like important level, which is why I would never have the meeting. I, I would sit staring at the bottle, but thinking yeah. about all of the explosives that the billions of dollars machetes, would buy. yeah, militias. <laughs> I feel like buildings to toss people off. Of. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I'd just be sitting in a meeting, just being like. I'm like the only person right now who has a chance to assassinate you. Should I do it? Should I do it? I feel like I should. If you had a billion dollar meeting tomorrow, you'd yeah. show up drunk as shit or oh, hungover. Yeah. But if you had to go through all the steps that this dude has had to go through right. to get there, right, right, mm, right. there's a decent chance by then you'd be like, all right, I'm going to take this seriously. I'm going to do this, take this seriously, this thing that like the, the yeah. thing that I've built for 10 you years. You would become acclimated it's to like, like the you're cult writer. you're building. If yeah. you had a critical meeting about your book, you would probably force yourself to be in the kind of mind state to deal with like 
a publisher. Yeah, I would hope so. You would hope so. That and if you, and if you didn't. But I have yet to prove that. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And that's if you true. didn't, that's a bad sign. That's a bad sign. <laughs> Now, I do want to become president of the world. I feel like that's okay, though, right? Hey, Dan, Robert, where's that brick? Give me that brick. Yeah. <laughs> that's an okay uh, ambition, right? Uh, okay. This is Chicago. There should be bricks. Oh, everywhere. Oh, so City of bricks. bricks. Yeah. <laughs> that's our nickname. Now, uh, so yeah, uh, Noman had worked out a plan with Masayoshi in 2018 to sell the bulk of WeWork stock for $16 billion to SoftBank. Now, Vanity Fair says that this was Neumann's escape plan. Quote, he and his investors would be insanely rich. This was a pivotal moment, a former WeWork executive recalled. Adam was acting like the SoftBank deal was done and we would be flush with cash. So he was planning on, again, like cashing out and escaping, which kind of hints yeah. to the fact that he doesn't believe any of this. He no, was just trying to get a big enough investment that he could get the fuck out. That's the thing that these guys, like every time we go through a story about these types of guys, their one failing is they take the grift too far and they don't know when to just bail on mm-hmm. Like uh, like with the guy we talk about with Alex Jones, he should have just bailed a while back. He mm-hmm. nailed his grift. He got what he needed. Could have walked away with a net worth five to ten million dollars. Yeah, Way just, more than that. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying yeah, minimum. Yeah, yeah. after just, after the election, probably yeah. could have. Yeah, like at a great golden parachute. They're That's not capable. Once you hit the yeah. grift, get out, and they just don't do it. The, well, none of them are the as smart. None of them are smart as Tom from MySpace. No. Right. Cash out no. 600 million bucks, doesn't Perfect. destroy democracy, goes and retires. Perfect. I got nothing against Tom. Did he cash out for 600 million dollars? Yeah, he did great. Good on Tom. And you know what he didn't destroy? Democracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything. He provided bands a way to share their mediocre music. And gave and us MIDI Dane files. Cook. No, yeah. Nobody's ever been like, oh man, MySpace really facilitated the yeah. Uyghur, uh, genocide. The Uyghur genocide. Yeah. Nobody yeah. hates Tom. <laughs> He's rich as shit and yeah. it's fine. You know what though? You know what though? Almost everybody who was on MySpace, who was old enough to have been on it, has a negative opinion of him because you were forced to be his friend. <laughs> And we should forgive him for that. He's like the elevator of... You yeah. know what? I'll go with that and say, the only cool person worth hundreds of millions of dollars? Hmm. Tom. 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 Tommy. Hey, Tommy. Tommy. So, he's got this soft bank deal. It doesn't matter that he shows up hungover to a meeting with the head of the Abu Dhabi Sovereign Wealth Fund. But then that soft bank deal for $16 billion falls through. Oh, no. Because people other than Masayoshi Son took a look at the company financials and decided that WeWork, which was losing at this point billions of dollars a year, maybe wasn't the best way to invest $16 billion. Yeah. Masayoshi agreed to invest another $2 billion, But at the rate WeWork bo- burned through, yeah, which is still like, this is why I say two things. Money isn't real. And it's dumb as shit. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Listen, listen, your company's fucked. Here's two billion. Here's two billion dollars. Yeah. I was about to be like, this is what happens when you have a group of people around you who is willing to say no to you. And then it was like, oh, it's only two billion. I was like, never mind. Fuck this guy. No, fuck this guy. This is stupid. Eat them all. <laughs> so, at the rate we work burned through cash, two billion dollars brought the company eight months, something like that. That's Eight, nine months. They lost $1.3 billion in the first six months of this year. $2 Jeez. billion buys you eight months? That's insane. Eight, nine. I'm not going to do the exact It's a lot of leases, man. It's a lot of leases. They lost $1.3 billion in six months, so eight, nine months seems fair. Um, yeah, it's absurd. Um, and less than Uber loses. Hmm. Yeah. Now. Uh, it's all like uh, real estate expenses, right? Like it's got like, yeah, it's, the it's bulk fucking of leases. It. Yeah, he's paying leases. Yeah. so other people will pay him lease, and yeah. he's giving them free rent in order to suck them in. Yeah, yeah. lure them in. But he just keeps giving free rent, so they just keep moving around business. It's a terrible business. This it's a great good. con. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a great. That's that's a pure. That's a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, basically. If I've ever heard of basically, it. Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, in every way but the legal way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Which is the it's best like kind of Ponzi should, scheme. It's yeah. like there should be a legal problem. There. It does seem like he should be fired out of a catapult for yes. his crimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, so again, the $2 billion just gave WeWork months of breathing room, not what they really needed. And so Adam started to get desperate for more funding. And I'm going to quote again from Vanity Fair. So he started dogfighting. Yeah. <laughs> See, you try to And this is where our sponsor, Dogfighter, <laughs> without an E, comes the into the product. <laughs> Use code bastards on Dogfighter and you'll get. <laughs> 
All right, I'm going to quote from Vanity Fair. According to sources, he pitched Apple CFO Luca Maestri on doing a deal with WeWork. It's unclear why Apple would want to invest in WeWork, and not surprisingly, the company passed. Uh, Neumann went to Google and proposed a partnership. They, too, passed. Neumann batted around other investment ideas. He earlier discussed buying Slack. He sat there saying, what companies can we buy? Maybe we should buy Slack, a former executive recalled. When Neumann returned to WeWork's New York headquarters later that winter, he seemed desperate. He barked orders and haphazardly reorganized divisions, at one point having as many as 20 direct reports, according to a former WeWork executive. Massa said we're going to be a trillion-dollar company, he shouted, according to a former executive who heard it. You're thinking billions, and we should be thinking trillions. You people need to be better than you are. Neumann seemed shocked by the scale of WeWork's losses. Sources say he tangled with WeWork's then-CFO Artie Minson over the cash squeeze. Minson declined to comment, but a former senior executive said Neumann drove the decision-making. Nothing could happen without Adam. Former executives said Neumann often reacted poorly. You don't bring bad news to the cult leader, one said. Whoa. I've never heard that before. No, but there's someone making, you know, making that, that uh, pretty blunt. More than one! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like that old phrase, kill the messenger. That's the sure. idea, right? I guess. That's the, the, the way that you succeed. Mm-hmm. Well, it's one of those things where uh, Steve Jobs is a guy I come back to a lot because um, he had a lot of this in him. But he also had, I guess it's a difference of they both, both Neumann and Jobs have this kind of deep understanding of the human psyche that allows them to manipulate people in a profound way. Jobs uses it to figure out something people want that they don't know they want and then deliver it and create changes the entire world, the smartphone. He knew before anyone else what exactly everyone in the world wanted to carry in their pocket and Mm -hmm. would addict them and everything. And he was right. Yeah. Neumann knows how to manipulate people, uses it to get billions of dollars in investment, but provides nothing. Um, And I'm not going to say what jobs provided is a net good, obviously, because the smartphone's fucking complicated as shit in terms of that. But at least... It's a thing. It's more you than You can't argue this. with it. Not, it's not yeah, a Ponzi scheme. It exists. It's not, it's, it may be like heroin, but it's not a Ponzi scheme. Right. Yeah. Um, this guy, it's just, it's just a lot of ideas. Yeah. Kind of, you know, like a lot of. And mostly the idea of how to convince investors. Yeah. He's a megalomaniac. Yeah. Yeah. Still, there were bright spots for WeWork in 2018. Earlier in that year, J.P. Morgan had led a $700 million bond offering for WeWork. While Adam's charisma had started to fail with Masayoshi, it worked on J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon. Jamie Dimon is a profound piece of shit, one of the architects of the 2008 elect, uh, uh, financial crash. We'll probably do so an episode I assume on he it. went to jail for his participation. No, of then, course right? not. No, He's no, a no, CEO. Because okay. I remember CEO. specifically that we held those people accountable to make sure that it would never happen again. No, nope. he went to jail for the inve- uh, eventual dogfighting ring he ran with, uh, <laughs> with Neumann. That's when Michael Vick took over sure. JP Morgan. Yeah. Jamie Demon's bank had a Diamond's bank handed Adam a hundred million dollar personal loan and a five hundred million dollar personal credit line. That's not that much for him though, right? Like yeah. based on it's like, too well, much. I mean, well, sure. But yes. like you were saying, like two billion dollars. He was worth four billion at this point on paper. Right. But he's also got seven hundred and fifty million dollars that he owes the company. Right. Yeah. Oof, that's tough. Yep. I feel bad like just being broke, uh, way better. Than but that. you're rich, <laughs> way way better than that. But when you're that broke, it comes back broke. around to rich. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the way it works. Yeah. For some reason. Mm-hmm. I remember I played a I played a sim game. I remember when I was like in my early teens. That was essentially like creating an apartment building. Sim tower. Sim tower. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I remember that so clearly, and I was really good at it. And I feel like I would run WeWork a lot better than that if I just had a sim city. Well, because you wouldn't try to make it everything. You would try to run a very simple company that leases office space to people that need it, which is fine. (laughs) Uh, Knowing knowing Jordan, he'd put a movie theater in the basement where you're supposed to put parking. and just uh, No, but you do remove the fire escapes because that shit's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. You can't afford that. No, and the extinguishers, detectors. Buildings don't catch on fire. If I know one thing about Chicago history, it's that fires never happen. It's all a myth. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all every, a lie. Every smoke detector is definitely real and hooked up all the time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Guaranteed. Now, Adam was heard to brag to people that Jamie Dimon, one of the architects, again, of the financial crash, was now his personal banker and might soon leave J.P. Morgan to run Adam's family investment office. Speaking of family, Adam had started bragging that his children would follow him as the leadership of WeWork. And speaking of unfathomable nepotism, let's talk a little bit more about Adam's relationship to Jared Kushner. 
They hung out at that fire. They hung out a lot. Oh, God. See, it turns out that the Neumanns and the Kush clan are actually very close friends. Don't call them that. <laughs> that is what they the are. The Kush clan? Did, mm-hmm. did, did Bessie, Betsy Davos work with uh, Weed? They did body shots like, a lot. What the fuck is going on? Is all evil surrounded by itself? Eric yep. Prince ran security at the yeah, school. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also did body shots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Ceausescu came back to life just to run things. Sure. <laughs> Now, uh, Jared clearly believed in Adam's promised ability to change the world. In the summer of 2018, WeWork executives rather suddenly learned that Adam had been drafted by Kushner to work on Jay Kush's Mideast peace plan. Don't call him Neumann, Jay Kush. I will. Neumann had put WeWork's director of development, Ronnie Behar, on the task of finding an advertising firm to put together a video for Kushner about how an economically revitalized West Bank in Gaza might look. This... I, I am never, I'm never, ever envious of their money. I don't want, a, I don't even understand a billion dollars, but the confidence that it takes, the ridiculous, insane confidence that it takes for you to be a shitty WeWork CEO and be like, I think, you know what? I'm going to solve Middle for, East for, peace. For, for, Fuck you. For the CEO That's of an insane. office leasing company and the son of a man who went to prison for real estate scams. Yeah. To sit here together and be like, you know this thousand this this conflict. I think we can do it. We can deal with this shit. I think we can bang it out in four years. All I can think of is like, do they do they like like each other? I think so. Yeah, I do think they do. Okay. I think that's why he gets this this task. Part of me wonders if they're even capable of liking each other. You know, it seems like each would like know each that the other is a fraud, yeah, right? I mean, like, yeah, yeah, right. I don't think so. No, I don't hmm. think. I think Trump. Maybe does. I don't think I don't I don't know how much he believes in himself, but I think Kushner is just that deluded. Yeah. Right. And dumb and has always been rich and totally special. And I, oh, I think man. I don't think his dad Neumann, didn't do I think wrong? might actually know he's a con artist. I really I go back and forth on the guy. Yeah. yeah. I think Kushner really is genuine about his beliefs. Right. I just think he's stupid as shit. No, I think that I, I think Trump is yeah. uh, so analogous to Alex Jones that it's it's insane. Like that idea of you waffling back and forth, like is this guy stupid? Does he know? Mm-hmm. Is he insane? What does he do? Yeah, and I, I don't waffle on Kushner. I think he's just never not been rich and yeah. has no concept of reality. Okay. I, I think that I think that about Kushner and <laughs> is, is a lot of people around him. I don't know. Adam might be in the same boat or he might be like a literal sociopath. I really don't know with Adam, but I think Kushner is just completely out of, out of reality. Okay. So sources... <laughs> Close to Adam Neumann, tend to credit the $4.4 billion infusion of SoftBank cash with inflating Adam's ego beyond the realm of sanity. How the could it money not? And the, what? <laughs> How yeah, could it not? How could it not? Yeah. No, that, that is yeah. fair. Like, yeah, of yeah, course yeah, yeah. that would break yeah. you. If I got oh, yeah. $4.4 billion, I would have a thousand tanks tomorrow. Yeah, I yeah, hate Journey, and I would make people dance around a fire mm-hmm. Journey if someone of gave me Of course you would. Yeah, Who yeah. wouldn't? It's, it's, it, yeah. it is the equivalent of giving someone a mental illness to give yeah. them that much money. Absolutely. It's terrible for you. There's a lot of data on that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, the money and the international success of WeWork got him sit-down meetings with world leaders discussing the refugee crisis and problems of peace and war with people like the president of Canada. Uh, okay, so what he does is lease space. Yeah. And now he is working with world leaders. Yes. On, I assume, the thing that he is an expert at, leasing space. Solving the refugee crisis. Okay, that's very different. That no, nope, nope that's same. Not the same thing. See, the reason all these people are leaving Syria, not enough not leases. Enough not enough okay. leases. <laughs> Bashar al-Assad reduced <laughs> the number of leases. You're right. You're yeah. right. I, 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 I respect my argument. Assad's big thing was like, there's no Hates office leases. space. <laughs> Hates yeah. leases. Yeah. <laughs> he only gassed non-leased space. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, uh, one former executive claims when Adam got in front of world leaders, it was like he started thinking he was one. And I'd like to quote now from a particularly batshit insane Gizmodo article, which covers Adam's ambitions as a global peacemaker. And this might be the most deluded paragraph anyone's ever written. The paragraph itself is not deluded, but what it's about is so deluded, I can't fucking describe it. I will shit in BB's mouth right now. Is that the sentence? No, but you should put down your mic. Okay. okay. (laughs) 
In conversations with people inside and outside the company, Neumann's pronouncements became wilder. He told one investor that he'd convinced Rahm Emanuel to run for president in 2020 on the WeWork agenda. Emanuel did not respond to a request for comment. Neumann told colleagues that he was saving the women of Saudi Arabia by working with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman to offer no. women coding classes, according to a source. In another meeting, no. Neumann said three people were going to save the world. Bin Salman, Jared Kushner, and Neumann. Shortly after the news broke in October 2018 that Saudi agents tortured dissident and Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi and carved his body with a bone saw, likely on order from the crown prince himself, Neumann told George W. Bush's former national security advisor Stephen Hadley that everything could be worked out if Bin Salman had the right mentor. Confused, Hadley asked who that person might be. According to a source familiar with the meeting, Neumann paused for a moment and said, me! Yeah. Your boy. <laughs> there it is. There you are is. on a special level of deluded. When Honestly, George W. Bush's former national security advisor is like, this guy's a fucking idiot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I only killed hundreds of millions of people. This well, guy, hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. This guy is fucking nuts. Man. Honestly, I believe that ROM part, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally believe that. Yeah, that's part. that's within the realm of believable. We Rom work agenda. Like within the realm right. of believability, yeah. yeah. He wanted to be Ben Salman's mentor. I, 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 that that dude, terrible guy, but not an idiot, uh, would shit him out. Like, oh, man. Adam spent the first half of 2019 preparing for WeWork's long-awaited IPO. In the startup world, initial public offerings are the stuff of legend. When Apple went public, it created hundreds of millionaires in a matter of minutes. Even the secretary got rich. Google's IPO brought even more multimillionaires into the world. Employees of WeWork clearly expected their IPO would bring the same windfall. CEO Adam Neumann showed no outward signs of worry. His company had been valued at $47 billion earlier in the year, a fact that he hoped would bring even more VC money in, and ideally convince SoftBank that WeWork was safe to keep pumping money into, and hope it would co will convince any of my not convinced listeners Money isn't real and yeah. is dumb as shit. What kind of what kind of person is forty seven billion dollars? Forty seven billion dollars. Half a, a that's Bezos. A, that's yeah. that's an insane that's number. That's insane. It's 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 idiotic. Oh, it is an there. idiotic number. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Twelve thousand people who I don't know what they're doing. Like it's, it's, picking lamps. Sure. It is. It is also stock in the, the entire kegs. System mm -hmm. enables these lunatics. The entire system is Everything. built by them. Yeah. And I. But there has to be some grunt worker at one of these at Moody's or whatever who's just like, they're not worth this much, guys. And then the top better than that. Yeah, fuck it. We'll put. I think all of the them. grunt workers are like, yeah, this grift ain't gonna last long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm gonna get my nineteen dollars yeah. an hour while yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at these assholes. Yeah. 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 So, the reality of WeWork's success was less attractive than the $47 billion valuation. By 2019, more than $12 billion of venture capital and debt had been pumped into the company and lost. And while it's true that WeWork's revenue had doubled every year and also lost hundreds of millions of dollars per year and eventually billions of dollars per year, and there were no signs of this trend abating. On September 18th, 2019, the Wall Street Journal published a massive expose on WeWork, revealing details about its toxic internal culture and, more worryingly to the suits, details about Adam's own own self-dealing. The report, based in part on the August filing his employees had made to the SEC as part of the IPO process, revealed that Adam had taken out more than $740 million in personal loans on his company's stock. Since Adam was dyslexic, he had to have his advisors brief him on the revelations in the story. While he huddled with his people to work out a response to the damning article, investors and board members called for him to step down. Adam was initially defiant, telling one colleague, I'm never not going to be CEO. But that was not in his hands anymore. WeWork CFO held a conference call with the board of directors and said that Adam had to step down. Jamie Dimon soon joined the consensus, arguing that WeWork would never get investors to pump in more money while Neumann was CEO. The company that had been worth $47 billion mere weeks ago now teetered on the edge of bankruptcy. In the end, Adam stepped down. His wife was forced to leave the company too. Mm. But don't worry about them. They walked away with a severance package worth roughly one and a half billion dollars. And she's still a licensed right. yogi. And a licensed so yogi, so they can make uh, income. So. Uh, was she licensed or was she... Certified? Uh, certified. Excuse me. It's very different. Who's the licensing board for yogis? Well, I mean, she knows the Dalai Lama. She was at his birthday. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Yeah. 
uh, Masayoshi Son agreed to pump another nine and a half billion dollars into this WeWork guy. as a rescue package. All talk of exponential growth and world conquest were gone, though. We Grow was shuttered suddenly, leaving dozens of wealthy parents with no fancy school to send their children to. Many were presumably forced to go with. Avert your eyes, gentlemen. Public schools. Mm. Since the best private schools all have long waiting lists. 4,000 employees, one-third of WeWork's workforce, were laid off. More layoffs are likely to come. And that is, more or less, where things stand now. Adam Neumann vaporized more than $10.5 billion, stole another $1.5 billion, put thousands of people out of jobs, and raised the cost of real estate in cities throughout the globe. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a little side effect of this that... Uh... Oh, yeah. That uh, gets sort of under recognized. Yep. Oh, the part where he's like, "I'll pay double for yeah, this." Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is an issue. It's yeah. so like even as this collapses, all the people who would have used the space or were using it before, now it might be prohibitive for them. That's something I didn't. Even or consider. the landlords are going to collapse, which yeah isn't my primary worry, but um, still, compared to him, people who operated reasonably legitimate businesses um it's just a a a a lot of human shrapnel in the wake of this but he's got a billion and a half dollars good for him no not no (laughs) not good for him no no bad bad yeah yeah pretty bad bad. fuck that guy so jordan i want to tell you about a dream i have it's a dream of a group of people group of human beings Pushing for their greatest potential, vibrating off of one another. Positive, positive, positive vibrations. Maybe machetes are involved. Uh, We got machetes. I like machetes. We got machetes. Okay. We're all drunk. All right. Really drunk. So far. And we're just we're just shoving Neumanns off the buildings, (laughs) just right off the top. Maybe a Kushner or two. Right now, I have a personal sense of morality. Uh, that I believe precludes oh, you'll, 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 me from you'll doing You'll this. learn to subsume that to the group. But I really think <laughs> I can just let that go for a little while. There you go. You know, I feel like a temporary suspension of morality is fine when it comes to... Now, we to all got to shave our heads. We live in yurts. Uh, these are all key fine. aspects. Do I get to push him myself? Yes. What okay, if I, well, then I'm done. What, so, what if I were to tell you you'll get a uh, cubicle on Mars? On Mars? Oh, yeah, this ends in Mars. Yeah, Hold yeah. on. Quick question. Yeah. Oxygen. No. Okay. But you won't need it by the time we get there. The yeah. The, I'll take the, 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 the kegs I'll take the provide deal. the oxygen. Mm. <laughs> I'll take the deal. <laughs> wow. So, gentlemen, this is the Adam Neumann story. An asshole who did nothing but scam people. It seems a fa- it fell apart pretty recently, it seems like. Yep, yeah, just within seems... the last couple of weeks. <gasps> yeah. I do like his meteoric rise and fall to only having $1.5 billion. Like, really a tragedy. the system works. We should yeah. subsidize an extra couple billion for him. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Where's, it... where's Masayoshi with that $16 billion, huh? He only did <laughs> nine. <laughs> well, 11. I've got something to sell him. It's called... Regular leasing, and it's like the Masayoshi. The whole reason he has all that money is that he invested a bunch of money in Alibaba back when it was tiny, and Mm -hmm. like one of the biggest things ever. But like, clearly, he's a dumb guy who got lucky once. Oh, I'd tell him that to his face. I think you're dumb. I don't think you're very smart. You got taken in by this shit. Let's crowdfund Um, an opportunity for Robert to tell him to his face (laughs) he's dumb. More people need to do that to these people. I watched a documentary recently. I was in um. Uh, I was in Amsterdam, uh, and I had an, atten- uh, an opportunity to attend uh, a movie at the uh, the documentary festival that they hold there. And it was a documentary about um, the World Economic Forum in Davos. And it was the kind of thing where, as I was giving it, um, we found out that, like, uh, uh, I think Klaus Schwab, the guy who founded it, was, like, th- th- like three rows behind us in the room and yeah. stuff. Like, they did a Q&A with him afterwards. But this documentary, which will be, I think, out uh, in, for the general public soon, is very much worth watching. Um, and it's about, like, behind the scenes at Davos. It's the first one that's been able to do that. So it's really a lot of interesting stuff. A lot of, kind of, like, you get a feel for these people as human beings and yeah. what they actually believe. Which they aren't. Um, I mean, they are. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, so there's a, a great moment in it where the, uh, the head of Greenpeace confronts Jair Bolsonaro in a in a like a, a soiree sort of thing mm-hmm. about ostensibly like she's been talking about the whole thing about how she wants to like confront him and these other people with their damage to the climate and she gets a chance to and she basically says like well you know we're we're looking at what you're going to do the Amazon like everybody's watching 
and then walks away and Jerry like clearly doesn't give a shit, like yeah. doesn't have the least impact on her. And all of her friends are like, I can't believe how brave you are. You're so brave. You did this great thing. And like, that's the fucking problem. Like if you go, if you go up to Jair Bolsonaro and you don't have a lining of questioning that's going to make him awkward, bottle him. Hit him in the face with a bottle. Ooh. Nobody does that to these people. <laughs> Nobody bottles them. Nobody <laughs> bottles true. these people. That is true. I will. I will back you up yeah. that no one does no do one that. Does yeah. yes. What do y'all? What do y'all? What do y'all think at the end of this? I don't know. It's it's interesting. Yeah. Like I I, I it, when, you know, whenever you hear a story like this about somebody who like there's a like real te- like not terrible. I mean he's got a billion dollars. Although that is terrible. But like whenever there's a big fall. Like it's just so clear over and over. Like there, there's so many times at which where there should have been like, hey, you said you wanted fucking offices on Mars. Hey, you you yeah, shut you, up. you want to be president of the world. Yeah. There's like indications along the way that like someone should have stepped in. And just we have a system that's based on no one ever stepping in. Yeah. Like the, as long as the pretense is there and the appearances <laughs> of, um, you know, like this is moving in the right direction. People are profiting off it. The, the, there's no incentive to be like, "Hey, you seem um, like you, you're acting out here." There's yeah. something. There's something you're acting out that we should probably uh, deal with. Yeah, and just let it happen, and then it just plays its course, and everyone gets hurt. The way that's how I feel, anyway. The way I view it is because I'm trying to exist in the present without losing my mind. Um, so the way I view it tends towards like trying to find a historical context to all of this stuff. And these types of lunatic grifters have been around since the fucking beginning. It's only the scale that has gotten larger. So I never know if this shared imaginary idea of forty-seven billion dollars, which just doesn't exist. No, it's like never it's just existed. imaginary. It's yeah. just fantasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's not like that's too much different from so many. You know, like uh, obviously the the nineteen twenty-nine stock exchange crash because all of that shit was imaginary too. Go back further and you get to so many different times the economy collapsed in London because that was all imaginary too. Like all of this shit. And the only thing that's changed, though, is that now a company like WeWork is influencing some dumb guy who invested in Alibaba along with MBS. And now he's given mm-hmm. power to yeah. help solve the Middle East peace crisis. He seems qualified. You know, like it used to be he was when, on a you're, when a in financial Gaza. guy yeah. just fucked up. The people in the financial world died, not like fucking the entirety of well, that's Palestine. Part of the problem with our system is that if you're good at one thing, and that one thing allows you to make money, then we decide you're good at everything because money is really the only thing that matters. So if you're good at money, you get to control healthcare. You get to control foreign policy. You get to pick where the the army guys go. I mean, how different is it, uh, like the idea that this guy is having conversations about foreign policy, how different is it than Trump was a landlord and is now president? How how different is it than a king? Yeah. This guy's parents were the king, so now he's in charge of the army. Yeah, and what was the original reality show but the royalty? It's you know? 15% smarter than yeah. a monarchy, but not a lot. No. The original reality show yeah. might have been royalty, but the, the one that'll change the game is you getting tricked by every cult leader in I the world. I really yeah. want to. That would be a great. I want to find out. I, it's it's one of those like I want to test myself fail. against the best. You'd fail every time. Yes, that's want, the problem. I, I, you just need to reduce it. those people. I want to do <laughs> Enter the Dragon via pushing them off of buildings. Okay, here's here's my <laughs> new pitch. Right. Okay. If I don't get taken in by the cult leader, I get all of their money and power. Let's raise the stakes for both of us. You can't have their power because you're constitutionally incapable from doing the emotional equivalent of raping people, which is what cult leaders do. Right. And their money isn't real. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes it is. That is true. Sometimes it is. Uh, Oh, Ron Hubbard's? That shit was real. (laughs) (laughs) That motherfucker had real lucre. (laughs) It's it's rolling the dice. He owed it all to somebody else. He just kept it. Didn't and matter. tricked them into giving him tax tax exempt status. Oh, none of these guys are as good as LRH. He he's, he successfully pour one out on. for one of the real ones. Yeah. Yeah. The realist <laughs> one. Yeah. What was it? Operation White White Cat. Oh, or Snow something? White. Snow White. When he invited, yeah, yeah, yeah. invo- I was more a fan of the time he made his own private navy. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. for ten years. God, I love L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> You can't not Salute love the guy. To the admiral. To the admiral. Yeah, yeah. The Commodore. I, I Commodore. Love, yeah, Commodore. I love Andy Daly as L. Ron Hubbard. And L. Ron Hubbard should burn in hell twice. We're going to end this episode 
ignoring Jordan's statement. Fair. <laughs> with a statement of our undying love to L. Ron Hubbard. Stop it. And uh, some plugs yeah. for your pluggables. Yeah. We uh, we do a podcast called uh, Knowledge Fight about That's Alex true. Jones. Uh, we put out too much content. Um, people can find it by Googling. Uh, knowledgefight.com is our website. And, yep. you know, we're on iTunes and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, on Twitter, it's sure. uh, at knowledge underscore fight. Yep. And uh, I am Jordan. I am a comedian, uh, still technically speaking. Uh, I am not busy. Uh, so go ahead and book him me for at go to bed. Jordan He's available for any dates in Nome, Alaska. Absolutely. Nome is high on my list. Yeah. I will also do corporate gigs exclusively. Nope. Only, for Lo- work. only no, uh, only no, no, only no, only no, only no. There's only a we work. There's a we work. No. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, then I will work for we work for, <laughs> I guess, twice the cost of a normal we, comedian. We riff, but you got to send them up. <laughs> you got to send them up double economy class. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's for twice sure. his economy. Yeah. No. Thanks Not for having us. Thing. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, this has been fantastic. And it's a pleasure to meet you in uh, in real life human person. Yeah. Well, thanks for inviting me to your wonderful city, Chicago. The city that sleeps occasionally. Never. Is On often time. awake. Yep. Slightly broad shoulders, but not very. The city of angels that is regularly awake, but often asleep with mm-hmm. broad shoulders and also an apple that is large and windy. The yeah. city of grandfathered in 4 a.m. bars, I feel like, is what we should be known as. Yeah, that's a good nickname. Oh, yeah. that's true here, huh? Yeah. 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 I There's have grandfathered in com- 5 a.m. bars. There's I have completely in changed my opinion of your city based mm-hmm. on that knowledge. On that? I was going to just slander it for years after oh, this, yeah. but yeah, yeah, now yeah. that I know that... Um, no, there's a bar near my place that is apparently so old, they open at 9 a.m. It's against the law to sell alcohol before 11, but if you've just been around long enough, all bets are off. Mm-hmm. Oh, beautiful yeah, exactly. for space, the I, sky I, is every more time I amber, dream of waves of I rain. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm Robert Evans. This has been Behind the Bastards. Behind the bastards.com sources, bastards pod, Twitter, Instagram. I am on Instagram at that. I write okay. Continue listening to this podcast. Listen to Knowledge Fight. It's what I listen to when I'm at the gym, when I'm driving, when I'm masturbating shamefully in someone else's kitchen. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowledge Fight, the podcast for all those moments. <laughs> That's what we set out to be. Really. Also, there's t-shirts on Tee Public for my show. <laughs> and coming soon, I forgot what the t-shirt was. I thought you were going to make a masturbation joke. No. Knowledge fight. If you accidentally catch yourself in the mirror, don't look. Mm-hmm. Bye.